So the good news is that the Helix is ready for installation with all the track now fitted. And I have finally sorted out the uh, lift out bridge section to allow for quick and easy access to my garage. The bad news is that in fitting the lift out bridge I seem to have done something to stop electrical continuity so it now won't work anymore. And the other bit of bad news is that the helix is ready to fit but I've misjudged the space it requires and it doesn't fit. Stick So I think it's fair to say that anyone who's building a modern railway encounters these problems from time to time. It's what I sometimes call the um, one step forward, two steps back principle, where you think you've made some great progress. In my case, I was really excited finally to have the Helix ready to install. And I figured that at the same time, it would make sense finally to sort out the lift out section which kind of prevents access into the model railway room so that I could separate the track and lift everything out when I need to come and go drop it straight back in whenever I want to run the trains. On the surface okay neither are completely straightforward jobs but I still thought that everything was set up ready to go and then I come into the railway room and find that trains have stopped running now across the lift out bridge so I've clearly done something to the electrical continuity of that section which goes beyond just the fact that I've cut through the track. I thought I already had feeders wired in and a removable socket which would allow, um, which would allow electrical continuity even though there was a gap in the tracks. And worse still when I offered up the helix to the space where I want to fit it, I discovered that I'd made a really, really stupid schoolboy error because the drop from the main deck down to the storage sidings underneath the main deck, the drop is right. But when I was doing those measurements, I didn't take into account the benchwork framing out the main deck, which of course means that you've got two, three inches of extra lumber down there preventing the, the helix from simply sliding in. So I've got to kind of bite the bullet and see if I can tackle both of those problems. Let's see how we get on. So I think it's worth saying right from the start that the problems I encountered as I tried to sort out the electrical issues with the bridge means that I'm not even going to try and tackle the helix in today's video. In fact, some of these images that you're looking at now as I went through and tested each section of electrical continuity and connectivity I even replaced some of the wiring um, and in the end even redid the feeds to the tracks to kind of um, to troubleshoot each stage of power going from the main bus through to the uh, extra plug-in socket that you're looking at here and then on to the tracks on the bridge. It, it just it took me several evenings. Um, these things just take time. But in the end it was worth it. 
because a few nights later, for the first time in quite a while, I was able to start running trains across this removable section. So it's definitely been worth it in the end. In fact, as somebody who even finds using the, the, the electrical voltmeter, if that's the right word, anyway, the electrical testing meter, and then redoing various bits of solder and stuff, all things which I, I just hate. But it paid off, the perseverance paid off, and so in that sense it's quite satisfying. Here's the final proof of the pudding when I was able to run a proper revenue earning train across the gap for the first time. And then at the end of that particular evening, simply unplugged everything and pulled the bridge out to be able to get back out of the train. So it hasn't all been boring and frustrating work, troubleshooting, sorting out the electronic side of things with the railroad. I was able to visit Tom at the uh, Apopka Vinland Railroad again. And apologies for Tom for uh, inadvertently calling him Ben in a recent video. Uh, but this was great fun. We're continuing our practice of trying to swap cars across our two layouts. I've got one of those really cool, like sliding things that you can mount your camera. On. And it meant that I was able to drop off a gondola and pick up another empty gondola, both of which were my own cars, as well as bringing one of Tom's cars back to my own railroad. And that was a really fun couple of hours of just switching cars around Tom's excellent layout. And of course the other good thing is that having persevered with finding the fault with my lift out bridge I was able to run a local freight for the first time in quite some time. Just able to do some fun switching duties. Tom's boxcar which was going to be spotted at Rocky Mountain Manufacturing. and basically just enjoy the layout as it's meant to be enjoyed playing with some trains really good fun Anyway, that's it for this update, folks. I'm sorry that we didn't manage to get onto the Helix, but I just figure I've got to spend some time really looking at that. So I'll just close with a few more shots of the switching duties of the local freight. As always, thank you very much for your interest. Please do like this video and subscribe if you haven't yet done so. I hope you've found something interesting and useful in me sharing my frustrations with you. And as always I hope that you get to enjoy your modelling until we see each other again. Take care and bye for now.